Hi, it's Susan. Welcome to another one of my live shows here. I'm just trying to set the camera right, get the right, oh, let's see, setting up the background. Hi, everyone. Susan Winter, welcome to my show. This is a live discussion today. Love my audience. You're already here and with me. If you don't know me and this is your first time tuning in, I am a best-selling author and a relationship expert, and I love my Thursday live shows because I get to interact with you, answer your questions in real time, and have a new topic each week, and oftentimes these are topics that you have given me. So firstly, shout out to my awesome, fabulous mods, B-Ray, Alex, and Gwyneth. Adore you. I couldn't do this without you. Thank you so much, and I'm excited because... I'm gonna meet B and Gwyneth in person when I'm in Munich. And Alex is a longtime client that I had on Magnify and a wonderful man. So I appreciate all the love we've got here. Thank you so much. Bamareg, I know that you're here. Other people will be joining in. Oh, Rabbit, hi Rabbit. Hi Mystique, hi everyone. Today we are discussing bringing your partner home for the holidays. Now, I've done numerous articles on this topic, and I think what prompted this, I found myself in Newsweek this week because Google Alerts will let me know when I'm in the news. And it was an interview I did a, a year ago for Elite Daily, the types of things I'm talking to you about today, how to prepare your family for your partner, how to prepare your partner to get the most out of this family experience. Um, and they had taken out of my four paragraphs, one sentence, no context around it whatsoever, and dropped it in to an existing article of a current day situation for which I would have a completely opposite opinion. Um, thankfully, Newsweek, they're responsible. They had a click through to the original article, but you and I know that people are not gonna go back and read the original article. But so what it talks about is that this is a question of boundaries. So when you bring your partner home for the holidays, boundaries are an important discussion. You will need to prepare your partner for what to expect. And the more informed your partner is, the better they will handle all the players that come in and out over the holiday season. Now, we all have you know, family you inherit. There are those that you love and those that are like, oh God, I know I've got to see Uncle Charlie again. He's going to be drunk by two o'clock and belching and then he's going to go on a political rant. And we've all got some of those in our family or the nosy neighbor that stops by and wants to poke and figure out what's going on. So you're going to have your different cast of characters. And if you are bringing your partner home for the first time, you will want to have these discussions to prepare your partner psychologically. Let them know where the minefields lie. Let them know, oh, Uncle Bernie, do not talk politics. He's going to go on and on and on. You just excuse yourself to get another glass of wine. Um, Aunt Bernice, she is all about uh, butterflies. You got to love butterflies. So you're going to get caught in a conversation for a half hour about butterflies, whatever it is. And do your due diligence, because if you are for the first time inter, um, inter, interviewing, introducing your partner to your family, your partner may not look like the type of person that they thought would be a mate for you. Um, very few of us bring home somebody that our parents 100% approve of because whatever their version of what they think you should have is very different than what you know you need and want for yourself. So sometimes these two things are in conflict. It is your job to pave the road for your family members. And by putting these little breadcrumbs along this newly paved road, you will explain to them those things that they will in time notice. You are going to program them with noticing these nuggets of beauty and value in your partner. You may come home with a partner who's tatted from head to tail. Your parents are conservative. They don't understand this. They don't know what this is. To them, it's rebellious. It's bike gangs. It's you're dangerous. Oh my God, this, this is a criminal. You may have to explain the other side of this person. They write poetry. Um, they've done very well for themselves. They're a startup entrepreneur. They have their own motorcycle shop. Whatever it is that they, they're creative, they're artistic, they're loving, they're sweet, they're kind, they're thoughtful. They picked you up from 
at school, they picked you up from work when your car broke. It, you know, you're going to have to mentally know the players that you're working with and foresee the possible issues and prepare everybody and prepare yourself. You never want your partner to be stuck in a situation where they're uncomfortable. And this goes for holiday parties. Many of you are taking your new partner home to where you live and you're going to see your friends, right? And you're going to go to a party and you're going to drop them off and you're going to start a chat with your friends in the kitchen. And here's your partner just sitting in the living room, not knowing anybody. Worse yet, what if you're speaking in a foreign language that your partner doesn't understand? What if, you know, that's like my girlfriend is Serbian and what if she starts chatting in Serbian and her American boyfriend doesn't understand what she's saying. Now he feels excluded. What if you all start talking about, oh, do you remember that time when we did this and that? And you go on for a half hour and your partner can't really say anything other than nod their head. So be mindful, put yourself in your partner's situation and be mindful of how you would feel. Now, we can't force people to like people, but you can do a very good job of paving the road to prepare for any dispositional traits that you know are going to happen and to involve your partner in things where they feel comfortable. Additionally, and I will read, if you have a specific question, send it to me in Super Chat or write it here. I will pick it up. I will take notice of it. I want you to ask me the questions so that we can prepare for these holidays. Um, if you know that your partner needs some time alone, make sure that they're allowed to do that. If you and your partner are going for four days to visit your family, make sure that you have some time to yourself as a couple, all right? Another issue, and you know, I was, God, I was in my late 20s through mid 30s, and I came home with the partner with whom I lived with for 10 years, and my mother had us sleeping in separate bedrooms. And she said, not under my roof. And I'm like, I'm living with this guy, you know, but she said, no, you're not married, not under my roof. And you know, this is, you're not going to change your parents. So I would warn all of you before you start off, um, pick your battles wisely. You know, you can't change your parents. What you've been trying to do it since you were a teenager, right? Now, maybe, hopefully, this conversation has nothing to do with a group of you that many of you are like, Oh my God, I got the best parents in the world. I got no problem with that. They can't wait to meet my partner. They're so cool. Well, good for you. Just be mindful. We don't want your partner boxed up and walking on eggshells and we don't want you to be micromanaging and uncomfortable. We want to let it flow, but I want you to be very clear. The job for you, to make sure that everything runs smoothly is huge communication on your end. Communicating with your family, what to expect, highlight the wonderful things that may not be apparent at first glance, and explain to your partner who are the players, what are the characteristics, what do they need to know going into the field. Now, I am going to be looking at your questions and I'm going to be answering them. Thank you very much. And again, if you have questions on this specific topic, please let me know. Uh, B. Ray says, it's probably different for people who don't like time alone at all. For those who suffer alone, perhaps any partner feels better than that. But I guess you're looking for quality. Ah, B, are you answering? Oh, you're answering Alex. Because <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> this doesn't seem to make sense here. Hi, Rabbit. Okay, Terry. Cameron. Hi. Um, okay, so thank you, Jillian. Yes, it was my birthday. When was it? Last Saturday. Uh-huh. Uh, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Um, so let's see. Alex. Okay. So Alex is talking to Gwyneth. All right. That's right. Terry. Oh my God. I just visited my dad and I felt like I was in high school and I'm in my fifties. Like I couldn't be out because I was visiting my folks. Okay. Here's Here's why I think it is so difficult for a young or adult to go home. We are the child our parents remember. It's so frustrating to have worked through insecurities, 
transformed as a human, amended ourselves to be the better person, only to go back home and have our parents look at us through a frozen lens of what they remember, as though they will not acknowledge who we have become today. And many of the things that are comfortable for us in our day-to-day -day lives, we dare not share with them, or we choose not to because of what, you know, where that conversation would go. And so I feel what you're saying, you know, for, for many people at one point in the last century, you know, it was the holidays and Norman Rockwell and the turkey and the happy family and the dog jumping up and down and barking and these Hallmark movies that we've been given and these wonderful family scenes. And for many people that I work with and for many individuals that I know, going home is a very tense and triggering experience. And then on top of that, you may be wanting to add your partner <laughs> to your own dismal experience and get them as your ally to help you through it. Now, a smart partner will know how to circumvent these conversations and kind of get in and sweep you out and change the subject. And, oh, um, gee, Mrs. Johnson, what will you show me how you make that pastry dough or something like that? Or, gee, this, this stuffing is great. How did you do it? I'm really interested in get you out of a tricky and cumbersome situation by changing topics. So that's perfect when you and your partner work in unison and they know what's going on. But I, I do understand that. This is why people go back to dynamics that they realize now they have words for it. When they were growing up, it's just the family they had. And now that they have words for it as an adult, they realize this is really unhealthy. There's no love here. It's all pretense. I hope that that's not your situation, but it may be for some of you who watch. So I just want to remind you that I will not be here next week, B, Gwyneth and Alex. Um, I'm having my face peeled, uh, like serious peel, CO2 laser. I do this every 10 years. I'm two years late on this. Um, it's for all the skin cancer. I've had basal and squamous cell. Peel, burn, peel, burn, peel, burn. We didn't know anything about this and all this you know, Scandinavian skin. Um, so it's something that I do routinely. And you do not want to see me. I should take photos and just save them for next Halloween. So not the 16th and possibly not the week after. Um, Terry, I'm sorry about this. Let me know what's going on with you. Okay. Um, questions on holidays, online dating. Uh, when guy I match asks, what are your plans for the weekend? What's the best answer? I've got no plans. I don't want to sound like a loser. Or if the guy asks you, okay, let's assume under the best conditions that he's asking you because he actually wants to see you. I would say something that sounds busy at a time that you know he's not going to see you. This is just off the top of my head. Yeah, I'm, I'm tied up. Um, I've got uh, family. I've got family or I've got, I'm meeting my friends for brunch, but then I'm free late afternoon through the early evening, through the evening. Because it just means, you know, I was just going to wrap presents and just take a chill thing. What did you have in mind? Yeah, what did you have in mind? Okay. Let them know. Don't let them know you're sitting around all Saturday. All right. Uh, let's see. Any other questions? Uh, Want to do dinner tomorrow? Do you say yes right away? Try to act busy and reschedule to look like an high demand online. Thanks. Rabbit, I personally don't like to play games. I'm going to figure out what I got with this person pretty soon. I don't want to pretend I'm something I'm not because I'll never be able to keep it up. You're going to know who I am just by interacting with me. Um, it sounds like you like them and therefore you're a little intimidated by them or maybe you feel that you need to elevate your value. If you are interested in them, I would say yes. you got to put yourself in the other person's shoes really hard. And I don't know, let's say you're a female and let's say you're hetero and let's say it's a guy. That's a hard thing for a man to do. We always place the burden on them to pursue, but it's a hard thing for anybody to do. Man, woman, doesn't matter. If you're the one asking the person out, there's that vulnerability about, oh my God, I could be rejected. So why make it so uncomfortable? Like, oh, I don't know. I'll get back to you. Like, I'm so cool. If that's a person who really wants a relationship with a real person, I would be a little turned off by that. I'd be like, wow. So this person's just dating a lot of people. I can't get time with her. 
you know, showing your self-esteem can be done in far better ways. It can be being consistent with your words and your actions and actually liking yourself. Um, I wouldn't play games. I mean, you're not at a point that you're trying to go no contact with an abusive person. You're, you're just trying to get to know somebody. So I'd allow that to happen as quickly as possible and not play games. Say, yeah, I say, oddly, I am available. I, I took this time off. If you want to make it look like normally you're really busy, I'd say I have given myself the treat to eliminate stuff I don't want to do, and I'm really taking a break. I'm going to ride my bike. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to get a massage. I'm on vacay. Love to see you. All right. See if you can't get it off the ground. Uh, let's see. Uh, nah. How can I talk to a guy without being weird. <laughs> Sorry for asking, but I really want to talk to a guy in my class. So yeah, communication skills are really an important thing for us to learn. They are as important as learning how to groom ourselves and you know how to be scholastically intelligent. I mean, communication is something you're going to use your entire life. Your fear of being rejected is your, your fear of whatever the outcome is, is blocking you from even beginning. So you can never get a project off the ground. You can never get a conversation started. If your greatest fear is looming in front of you, like, oh my God, what if I look weird? What makes you think opening up your mouth is going to make you look weird with a guy that you like in class? I'm assuming you're in high school, maybe college. I mean, a smile is a good beginning. And you don't have to be like, huh. <laughs> you know, just a smile and look in the eyes and then look away and let it build. And then the next time smile again, maybe he'll ask you how you're doing. You introduce yourself. I've always done formal introductions. I mean, I, I, I see people all the time. And if I want to get to know somebody, I may say to them, I see you here quite often. We've never been introduced. I'm Susan. I just want to say hi. And that's in when you're in an environment where you are seeing them repetitively. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, Ch there's a big difference between chasing somebody, pursuing them, and looking absolutely um, insecure and needy, and saying hello. So I think, I hope that helps you. Um, let's see, okay, thank you. Online dating during the holidays sucks. Hi, Susan. Hi, everyone. So any other questions about the holidays or dating, anything like this? If you have any questions about introducing your partner, Alex, I know you were talking to B before, because otherwise I have nothing to talk to you about today. <laughs> I can continue on. Well, what I can tell you is that, again, I want you to be very much aware of any triggers that your family may have when you spend time with them. You know your sister, your brother, you know their issues, you know your parents' triggers, you know your triggers. I want you to really think this through, not because you're going to be a pushover or you're going to ignore people's bad behavior, but because I'd like you to be able to be skilled at dodging problems and being diplomatic. You know, I have a colleague that is already getting in fights and hanging up the phone with her father because somebody's vaccinated, somebody isn't, and she's getting all upset about it and she doesn't want to come back. The other one's going to be this frustrating. And, you know, I'm listening to this whole thing going, God, I know this isn't the Christmas anybody wanted. I mean, you're already starting with fights because if this one comes and that one comes, and if that's what it's got to be, it's better to shut up and just say, I'm working. I'm so sorry. Maybe I'll come back in January. Um, you know, I used to not come back at Thanksgiving because uh, my parents lived in Denver and um, I was in New York and it was just such a long, it, it, such an arduous trip for basically... However it worked out, in my memory, Thursday was always the day for Thanksgiving. 
And so Thursday, something like that, and we'd have to fly out on a Wednesday night, get there on Thursday, and then hope to get back. But however Thanksgiving came, you have this small window of time and everybody's flying at the same time. And between flights being delayed and having a seat and getting bumped from your seat and all these things, I just made up my mind that I was not going to come back at Thanksgiving just because it was such a short time. And I know my mom felt badly about that. And I just, it was just, the flying was so horrible. But I explained, I'll be out there for two and a half, three weeks at Christmas. I will take that time off because I, you know, so I know the holidays are tricky for all of us. Figuring out how to take care of ourselves and how to take care of our responsibility to our families and what we think will make our families happy and our parents happy. Okay, very good. I have a question here. Thank you so much. Angie June, $10. Thank you, Angie. Do you have, oh, uh, Nas in high school. Okay, honey. Angie, do you have a question for me? Thank you so much for this, but I'm here to answer your questions. So if you have one, please write it normally and we'll get back to you. I do appreciate your $10. Thank you very much. Listen, I want to urge everybody to go to susanwinter.net when you're off of this. That's my website. And go to the homepage and sign up for the newsletter. I have something very exciting. So I'm, you know, I, I've thrown away thousands of email addresses like, oh, th these people are from a long time ago. They don't want to hear about this now. They're probably happily, you know, partnered or whatever. But now I realize, you know, any social media site can go down and I don't have your email addresses here. So I've started to reconstitute this newsletter. And what I do is I have special things that you're not, that I'm not going to talk about here. I have special contests. I'm actually holding something um, where I'm going to ask for a contribution from all of you as far as a quote about me. And then we are going to pick from those people and have a special little online party for the winners of that. And also when I tell you where I am in different parts of the world, as I would like to meet my fans and followers, I'm not going to be posting that you know, mainstream, like, hi, everyone, I'm at this hotel in this country. I'm not, so it's always internal. So sign up for the newsletter. I don't sell, I don't share it. I don't sell it. I don't even have a product to sell you, to be honest with you. So it's just for you. So Alex, hi. And Angie, I'm still waiting for yours when you write it. Thank you so much. And if that was a contribution, that's awesome. Thank you very much. So Alex, five pounds. This is number one of two. Alex is one of my moderators. Went to a group meeting. The lady who didn't meet me was there. I didn't, the lady who didn't meet me was there. I didn't know she'd be there. She came over to me at the end. We talked and a hug. She's an odd one, Alex. Where's part two here? Okay, I know you're typing. Please tell me that the group meeting that you went to wasn't the night that she was supposed to be with you and just blew you off to go to this instead. Let's see, okay. Uh, Terry M, give it a go if you think, okay. Terry says, I met a guy I liked on my trip. How do I pursue him after meeting one time? We danced that evening, we went to dinner, but it would be long distance and he has a lot of attributes and attractiveness which I haven't had in a long time. Have you exchanged information? Did he give you his number and you give him yours? Because he might be involved with somebody it like long time involved or just starting something new. And you don't really know that he's available, even though he paid attention to you wherever you were. So maybe he's in your city and he lives far away and he's got a whole nother life. If you gave him your number, but he gave you no contact address or number, I would not pursue it. There's a reason if they don't contact you. If you both exchanged information, Terry, and you want to follow up and encourage him and say, I really enjoyed meeting you. I think you're a special guy. Love to see you again if you come through town or like to keep in contact with you. That's it. One time over the net. And if he doesn't pick up, there's something going on in his city. Okay. That's just one time. Very classy. Reach out. The encouragement and let you know. Okay, so uh, let's see. Alex, my dear, I'm still waiting for part two. Uh, okay. Susan, 
is right. She's strange. <laughs> okay, Alex, part two, and then Fred, I'll get right back to you. Part two, and again, you poor man, you have to give me five pounds. Okay, she said I looked nervous. How do I be less nervous? No, it was a different day. We'll probably meet each Sunday. I might have to work with you. Well, worse things could happen. <laughs> um, Alex, you need some serious duty dating. You've been very successful with women that are not, how do I say this? That don't intimidate you or you don't desire that much. You are very visually aware. I suggest that you really do a serious circuit of duty dating. You don't have to get involved sexually. You don't have to promise them something you're not going to give them. Take these girls out to the pub, chat them up, get your conversational skills and your wit going really well, Alex. You're just not seeing enough people. You're just not. So when you see one that for you is visually attractive and kind of like, shows a little interest, you, you, you get all like this because it, it's just because she's too rare. So I would suggest starting to date women that don't scare you so much, gain your confidence, go to the next tier of women that you think, oh, it's a little out of my league. Keep getting comfortable with them. Keep dating women that as you feel, I got this, you go to the next tier of whatever is your trigger, like, oh, my God, I got a thing for redheads. Oh, my God, I lose my mind over a redhead. So start with Strawberry Blonde and work your way up. So, you know, whatever it is for you, because the way that we attend to our nerves is through experience and practice, right? Everybody's nervous if you go on a date a couple times a year. It's the biggest thing you've got going on. If it's just Monday and you've got five more dates that week, it's just like, oh, whatever. So just the same thing as if we only sing in front of an audience or perform once a year, you can think that's too much stuff. So when I was on Oprah, you would think I'd be nervous, right? Well, first of all, I wasn't because she was the first one that I knew wasn't going to attack me. But, um, okay, got to get to Fred too. I know Fred, I've missed you. And I've got to get back to Alex. But honestly, I had something. So I, I was rerouted. I was heading to Germany, one of my favorite places in the world. Yes. And because um, I love the tall, you know, big tall men. And uh, I was going there and I was more nervous about connecting to my flight and that I had a travel partner that I was going with that had to be rerouted because I had all the train tickets and I had to meet her in Heidelberg instead of, I don't know, prizing or wherever we were going to start. So um, I, I had that in my mind. So I was, I was kind of preoccupied just like that. I felt zero pressure. I wasn't nervous at all because I had something else on my mind that was actually more important than Oprah. Isn't that crazy? I don't mean more important, but I mean, I had something bigger going on in my life. And that was just the pit stop before I got on the plane to go. So the same, it's just acclimation. Alex, I have an assignment for you. I want you to date. Just go to the pub. Just talk to girls. Go cheap, cheap, cheap. Coffee, pub, coffee, pub, short periods of time. Chat, 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 chat. I want you to build up your conversational skills, okay? We got to get you working your way up to 007, okay? Because you, you're a very cool guy. You're a nice looking man. You just need more Confidence and confidence is born of experience. No one can be confident when they have zero experience. I'm confident talking on camera. I'm learning Zoom. For those of you who've worked with me and you're like, what is Skype? People used that 20 years ago. Why do I have to connect with you on Skype? If that's what all the TVs, every, every TV station uses Skype. People don't use Zoom. It's just weird. Don't ask me why, because I do a lot of television. When I get off with you guys, I'm doing the Today Show. Yeah, so this is why I'm going to time it and make sure I get off at the exact hour. But what happens is I'm used to this. So I get nervous. And I know Zoom is easy, but you're going to, any of you that book with me, if I'm like, oh, am I doing it right? I get nervous with the technology. And once I do it, I won't be nervous anymore. Okay, so that's that, Alex. We got to get you out there dating more, okay? Um, 
Okay, now let me go back. Fred, five, S-G-D. Thank you. Um, hi, Susan. Sorry for this unrelated question. That's okay. I'm here for you. Um, if and indeed I meet my twin flame, how do I move on? Uh, let's see. I don't understand the relationship and I'm so drained. So it sounds like you've already met your twin flame. Um, if I, I think you, I think it means if I've indeed met my twin flame, how do I move on? Um, this may be the hardest thing for your mind to understand. In our world, we have one outcome for an incredible connection. That means the couple's together. Like, I wouldn't be drawn to this person if I weren't meant to be with them. Why would the universe put somebody in front of me so perfect only to rip them away? What, oh, what is the reason for that? That can't be the story. That can't be the intended outcome. And yet it is. In my world, I don't think twin flames stay together. I see these people, they're in their early 20s going, I met my twin flame. I'm like, you got no idea what you're talking about. They really don't. They've met a kindred spirit that they're romantically attracted to. They're using the wrong term. The twin flame will burn the shit out of you. It is trial by fire. It is like, it, it is like you are burning off everything that's a remnant of who you were. You are destroyed. You are taken down to ashes only to rise again. It, whatever your world was before, it is never the same. Your reality changes, you change. It is a complete destruction of the original person, but not in a bad way. It, it's just so unique and so nebulous. I hate to, unless I'm working with you specifically, I hate, I, I can only use what I know to be true from my experience. And your experience may be different. This is not to negate this, but do understand, and I will say this a thousand times over, twin flames are not for domestication. They are an experience that comes on a spiritual level. Those of you who are spiritually active, those of you who are devoted to your spiritual practice, please don't think this is a requirement for evolution. It is not. I don't know why it happens to some people. It does. You can't make it happen. It shows up. You deal with it. Nobody knows what it is till they get it. Nobody knows how to do it when they're in it. No words that I say can even guide you through it because when you get in, it's like your brain gets washed clean and you don't remember a thing. It's going to be the most powerful connection you've ever had, but it's going to be the most volatile. And remember, we can't sustain those. Those volatile, whether they're the player that comes into your life and sweeps you off your feet and, you know, two weeks later they're gone. You know, it's just, it's not meant for ongoing partnership. And, and, uh, it's a whole different conversation. I'm happy to talk to you about it individually if you want a consultation. Okay. Thank you, Fred. And I know you're drained. <laughs> oh, Terry says, yes, we exchanged numbers. He gave me a ride home back to my dad's house. Okay. So he knows where you live. If he wants to be a gentleman, he'll send you flowers. Good. Okay. I would definitely follow up, Terry. Okay. Alex, we finished this. Terry, he did break up a month and a half ago. And I said, yeah, you have some healing to do. Listen, stop telling men what they have to do. All of you. I don't mean to spank you, but not your business to tell him. Basically, a guy who doesn't know what to do and wants to proceed with you will hear that as, oh, she doesn't want me to talk to her. Okay? We do not program other people as to what they feel. No more than an older woman will tell a young guy, you should have a young woman. No, if he wants a young woman, he'll take a young woman. So not your business. Going forward, I would strongly suggest you amend that habit of being helpful. You don't know that he needs time to heal. Half of the people that have been in a relationship and break up were ready months earlier. They just didn't pull the trigger. I stayed in a relationship five years longer than I wanted to because I was busy. It was inconvenient. I didn't know where he was going to live. I mean, it was my my property. I just felt like, I mean, yeah, he could have, but it would have been, you know, he didn't bother me, but it's just like, it was not happening. And you keep trying and trying. So do me a favor, do yourself a favor. No more instructing them as to what they need to do. 
Okay, don't play therapist with your partner or a love interest. Not appreciated, all right? Keep your cards to yourself. If something happens where you feel the person's not ready and you've been involved with them and you see them pulling away, then you may say something. But don't preemptively say something, okay? Okay, let's see. Um, B. Oh, let's see. Angie June. B, I don't know how you caught this. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. B, I love you so much. Yeah. And B says, um, Angie June, thank you so much. He asked me to start talking and getting to know each other. I met him online and added him on Facebook after a meeting. He seems like a nice and classy gentleman. What should I do? Oh, well, proceed. What did I miss here? I don't understand. You meet somebody, you like them, what should you do? You move forward in your conversation. Yeah, there's nothing else here, right? So you just move forward in your conversation, sweetie. You, you start the ball rolling. It is really important to learn to be a good conversationalist, all of you, really important. And if you have to listen to, I don't know, NPR or listen to Clubhouse or go to TED Talks and have them playing in the background so you have some interesting commentary on topics that you like, then do so. But give yourself some learn to speak, learn to be a good communicator, learn to be an exciting and dynamic person to talk to. And when all else fails, something I learned years ago, and this is probably the hallmark of how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie, like, or maybe he's thinking grow rich. Wait, who wrote, who wrote how to win friends and influence people? Might've been Dale Carnegie. But the thing, the point is people love to talk about themselves. All you need to do is say, I find you fascinating. I can't believe that you play soccer and you do this and you do that. And you, you know, run this company the way you do. And how did you ever do that? And ask them questions. Ask, ask, and not the boring ones. Like, you know, do you have, uh, like, what's your favorite color whatever? Just say to them, you know, ask them interesting questions and get to know them. People feel close to the people that find them fascinating and wonderful. We all love attention. Why do you think players work? Why do you think love bombing works? Because we love the attention. So give this person attention. Don't be afraid. Come on, people, be fearless. This is, this is your life. Time is ticking. You, it is not a dress rehearsal. We got to get out there. You see somebody, you like them, think through what are your options, make a decision, back it up. If you don't find success, go back, reassess. What did I do? Was it me? Was it them? On to the next. Try again, try again. We can't be so, oh, I don't know what to do. Okay, we've got to try and be fearless in this. You've got a lot of information. Look at YouTube. I didn't have this. I mean, when I was dating my younger man, I didn't have any resources. Nobody was talking about this. I had to do it all on my own. There's so many great people here that have great attitudes. So find somebody that can talk you through everything. Terry M. $10. Thank you, my dear. You, you are certainly welcome. I want you to proceed as if everything is wonderful. Uh, and here we have Carla. Hi, Carla. Uh, Casimiro, five uh, pounds. Thank you. What to do if your family is a little bit on the dysfunctional side? Well, hello and welcome to the majority of the conversations we're going to be having. Okay, it's manageable now, but there was some dysfunction growing up. Yeah, okay, we understand that. That's very common. So are you bringing a partner home? Scared of explaining my situation to someone I'm dating that might come from a family that seems quite healthy and they are really close. Okay. So I'd imagine that you are currently seeing somebody that it is your person, that it must be very new, but your sense is that they come from a very healthy family. Why don't you start asking them about their relationship with their family? Are you bringing them home for the holidays? Are you introducing them to your family? If so, you may want to explain to them that you haven't had their experience. It is really important not to wear our wounds early on. In the beginning, when somebody is just getting to know you, they understand there's stuff under the surface. 
but we always want to speak about the things that we have worked our way through. When people speak from a position of current pain and current issues, this becomes daunting to some people that are just getting to know us. It's not that they wouldn't hold our hand and walk through it if we were already in a relationship, but maybe as they're assessing their own sense of leveling up and, okay, I want a healthy partner that handles stress and knows how to handle their emotional life. What if that's been their correction? And then they meet you and then you're like, I'm not saying you are. I'm just using this as an example. Somebody's like, oh, I've got this dysfunctional family. It's really horrible. And my father was this. And then he's going to yell at my brother. I don't know. I'm afraid to go back. I mean, it's just, it's a lot for them to take on. But then again, there are people that are rescuers that may just love that. <laughs> so I don't know. But your family situation doesn't have to be the same as his. I walked into a family situation, very dysfunctional family, um, as an only child and adopted in a very tiny family with even very tiny relatives spread all across the United States. I walked into a family with nine kids and a um, crazy father, crazy in a brilliant way, like out of his mind, spoke dozens of languages and would slip from one language into the next and, you know, thought I was phenomenal, but, you know, just. I mean, I had to like dissect. I mean, there'd be a little French, a little Italian, a little Russian, a little English, and you just have to grab whatever word you could understand, whatever language. And and then, you know, all these kids. My God, Christmas. You got nine people plus the boyfriend and the mother and the father. I mean, I'd never been around a family that big. And I mean, so everybody's got their drama and the girl brings her boyfriend and then you've got their partners. And oh my goodness, there's so much going on. Then you got kids. I was never exposed to a big family like that. So that was my learning curve. My family was a much cooler experience, shall we say? Um, reserved, cool, polite. And this was just wild. I mean, there'd be screaming and then there'd be laughter and it was, but it was a wonderful experience. So. In a worst case scenario, which is pretty, pretty wonderful, go and experience what the other side is like. It's really wonderful to have our impression of how we think the world is jarred by something that is a new experience for us. Meaning we can always understand things intellectually. But walking through the physical experience is where we truly integrate it into our being and to absorb an entirely different reality from a healthy family. That resets your baseline. Exactly as I say, when you get into a positive relationship and you experience love, even if the love does not last, your baseline is now higher. So there's nothing but good coming out of this. And I hope you can see it as that. So thank you for that question. That's really, really good. And as far as explaining your situation, be minimal. Just enjoy theirs. If you get a chance to go to his, Carla, I would do that. Let's see. Um, so Angie, we did answer your question. Thank you so much. I think we got that. And uh, <laughs> let's see. Hi, Susan. I live in Edgewater, New Jersey. I know where that is and work in New York City. Whenever I meet men in New York and tell them I live in New Jersey, they tend to not like it. I don't like New Jersey men and New York rent is too expensive. Any advice? Yeah, I know. That's crazy, isn't it? So there's a prejudice, I know. I'll never forget, you know, I voluntarily built a home out in Hamburg uh, at Crystal Springs. Not, not the resort with the skiing but the, the private golf course, and it was magnificent, right? And I had a man tell me when I came into New York, like I'm an idiot, he said, you may want to get a personal dresser. I realize you're from New Jersey and maybe you're a little unfamiliar with style and people with sophistication. I'm just watching him going, oh my God, you've got no idea who you're talking to. I mean, he never, I mean, I was in gym clothes when he met me. I said, I'm on my way to the gym. So obviously I'm not wearing a dress. 
and he chooses to take me into the four seasons. I'm like, I am not dressed for the four seasons. Then he's embarrassed that he's taken me there and said, I obviously can't take you out in public. It's like, you caught me on my way into the gym. But the whole thing is he called me the girl from New Jersey. I mean, forget the fact that I'd lived in New York. Forget the fact that I worked for CNBC, Financial News Network. Forget the fact that I worked for half of the Fortune 500 companies or that probably the people he'd like to know, I already knew. So this is the thing that kills me. There is that assumption. Do you work in New York? I mean, listen, there are a lot of people that just live over the river because it's easier and the apartments are bigger and it's quieter. And so when you meet a guy, just tell him you're from the, the tri-state area. So when they find out that you're from New Jersey, I would say, yeah, I chose to live across the river. Just I have to get away from it. I just need to love, love, love the city. I've been there, spent a lot of time there, and I've done that. Just tell them, been there, done that. I needed that buffer of the Hudson. I love to look at the river. I love to walk. I love the quietude. I live off an avenue, or don't ever move to an avenue. I've been in Manhattan for 40 years, right? The emergency vehicles and the dirt, and oh my God, it never stops. And then the people screaming, because Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, they're like, ah, rah, rah. they're all drunk and they're running down the streets and, you know, playtime. So explain the benefits of living there. And you can even precipitate this conversation by saying, you know, oh, yeah, I know people, it's so crazy how people have such um, a, a narrow mindedness or a limited idea of what it is. It's just a, a better tax benefit and cleaner air across a little river that people choose to go to. My apartment is gorgeous. I prefer to have a beautiful apartment where I come back and I can look at the city and it just gives me peace of mind. I love I love the fact that I'm all about the city. So you've got to sell what's great about your choice and don't feel badly. And I understand why you're not attracted to guys in Jersey. I have this friend named Keith. He's such a doll. And um, he's like, I can't date women from New Jersey. I can't. But what he's talking about is a mindset. So here's the difference. You've got to key into the fact of where your mindset is. You may live in a place, but your mind is not of there. Okay? Believe me, my mindset is not of Arizona. Got nothing here. Can I ride a horse? Yeah. Do I play golf? Yeah. Anything else? Nothing. No mindset here, nor the mindset of my neighbors. Absolutely no connection. Benefit, sunshine, big home, great for shooting videos. Yep. Okay. Uh, here we go. So thank you, Carla. We did this. I've answered everybody else's. Terry M. I'm going to be wrapping up in about 10 minutes. It's a great story. Thank you. Uh, Angela, I'm so sorry, but that get a personal dresser comment had me really laughing. He essentially told you everything you needed to know about him right away. Okay. Here's the worst part. He took me to the basement of Bloomingdale's. I didn't even know there was a restaurant down there and hid me because he was ashamed of the way I looked, yet he couldn't wait to try and jump my bones. I was not attracted to him. I did not tell him off, and I'll tell you why. He was a garmento. He was in the garment business, but my girlfriend had an independent contractor business with him and had set us up on a blind date. And he was, remember I was also into younger men and he was like a little bit older than I was at the time, maybe 10 years. And he thought he was something for New York, but he doesn't know the people that I know in the world I've come from. So, you know, you like having your little, you know, clothing company and you're in New York doesn't make you a big boy in my world, but he's hiding me as though I'm like something to be ashamed of and trying to explain to me that I need to understand that now I'm in the city. And it's like, I must've said to him 10 times, I was on my way to the gym. You asked me for a cup of coffee. I told you I would get a cup of coffee and then head to my gym. And you convinced me that you wanted to continue talking, right? So it was so insulting. 
And I didn't tell him off because she was working with him and he was her boss. And I came back and I told her and she said, oh, you should have told him to go F himself for God's sake. And I said, I didn't want your job to be in peril. I also used to have men in the neighborhood who would see me in my gym clothes. Remember, I was working as a fantasy action figure. So I was a fitness girl. So I was fit. And they would see me in the neighborhood and try and posture themselves like, um, you're a dumb athlete, so I know you're poor and you've got no social skills and you probably come from a really poor family. So I run somebody's trust fund and blah, 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 and I'm this and that. And I know people and you should sleep with me because of that. And I'm just looking at them like, you can never, ever judge a book by its cover, ever, ever. Can you think that a woman in shape automatically means she's stupid? or a person who is rich is automatically nasty. It doesn't go like that. Or a person who's poor, that you assume to be poor, will do anything to be with somebody. I mean, it's just, there are no absolutes in this world. So I've seen every kind of person and I've had uh, uh, so many experiences of people reading me the wrong way my whole life. And maybe that's why for me, it's been important to try to be honest, because if I have to send out a press release, I'd rather do my own and have you see it. Here's my press release. Here's what I am. Here's what you're getting, because I know you're going to try and slap something on me anyway, like a blank canvas. You're going to want me to be something you want me to be. I'd rather you know what this is. Run now if you want to. If you want to stay, this is cool. This is what you're getting. Maybe that's part of it. I don't know. We'll figure this out between all of us. Um, <laughs> I was thinking about moving to Hudson Yards. Rachel, like one of the most expensive places you can move to right now, if you move to Hudson Yards, move because you want to move. Um, if a guy in New York thinks he is superior to you because you live across the river, that doesn't go away once you're involved and you live in New... He's already got an issue but he's probably insecure. It's the only thing he's got over you. What, do you have a better job than he does? I mean, think about the other factors. Are you really pretty? Why did he need, why do these guys need to try and put you down? Maybe you're really pretty. Maybe you're really smart. Maybe you have a really good job. Maybe you have a really great body. Maybe there's something that they feel insecure about, so they want to try and minimize you, you know? Just have to find good people, that's all. By the way, your gym outfit is dressing up down here in Florida, huh? Mindset indeed. You know, so I, in, I remember New York City where men had three-piece suits. I came there from Minnesota. You see these gorgeous men in three-piece suits, women in high heels in December. We were wearing snow boots and they'd have high heels and mink coats and harsh, you know, the, these cheap contour. That was the 1980s in New York and everybody was so gorgeous. I remember feeling inadequately dressed on the Upper West Side going to the gym in a track suit. I know, not a leisure suit, but it was like, you know, a powder blue jacket and bottom. They were called track suits. And I remember being ashamed if I ever had to, for some reason or other, leave my local neighborhood and venture a little bit into Midtown because one did not dress like that. Then you come to places like, you know, uh, Arizona, where men are having dinner in flip flops with their crusty, dirty toenails and a T-shirt. And you're like, oh, my God, at least make an effort for God's sake. Right. So the world has changed quite a bit. Um, let's see, Alex flips, uh, it's about the mindset. Okay. <laughs> let's see. Um, I don't, I don't think they want somebody close by in their neighborhood so they can hang out more easily. Um, let's see. What does she say here about New York city men? Or maybe New York city men want easy access and are lazy to come all the way to New Jersey. Listen, I have a dear friend in Boston, who, very good looking man in his mid fifties. And because he was single and phenomenal personality and in good shape, great, great, great personality. His profile photos had been stolen from Facebook so many times. I mean, cause he's just a happy, good looking man, right? And he put, has to live within 20 minutes where I am. He was that specific. 
Because he's like, I don't have to travel. I love blondes. I'm in Massachusetts, tons of blondes. They're all within here and I'm not going further than 20 minutes. He got exactly what he wanted. He knew what he was. Okay, so Natalia, $10. I have given my boyfriend another change and he, I think you mean chance. And he became physical again. He also landed he also landed in jail for beating up our neighbor to a pulp due to road rage. I left for good. Am I dealing with a narcissist? Natalia, I don't care what you're dealing with. Put any word you want on it. You are dealing with somebody you are walking away from. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You're dealing with an, a, a person that is not boyfriend material. Okay? Doesn't matter. Narcissist, deranged, anger management issue, problem child. Um, it doesn't matter. Your deal, terminology does not matter. Okay? If you need a word to make it close, you are you have left an abusive person with major anger issues that is detrimental to you, okay? You're leaving an unwell, unhealthy partner, and I hope you keep walking. Terms, listen, this pop psychology that we have with all these terms that we use, you know, um, I would get uh, on a on a call with somebody who's a client, and the first thing they'd say is, "I come from an abusive relationship with a narcissist." And I mean, this was almost routine for about two years. And you know, it just depends on what time period we're living in. Oh, I come from a codependent family, or I was this and that, and whatever words. Of, now it's attachment theory, like, "Oh, I'm gonna," you know, "I'm an anxious attacher, and I had an avoidant." And it, it, so people are picking up the current lingo. None of us are therapists here, I think. I'm not a therapist, need to be clear about that. So I'm very reluctant to put um, that kind of a term on somebody, but clearly you are dealing with a dangerous to your well-being, unpredictable, predictable in that he's violent, a, a, a person with who, who has no emotional regulation, okay? No self-control or discipline around anger. Dangerous for you, your family, your children, your dog, your cat, everything. Get out. No explanation necessary, okay? Promise all of us this isn't something, this is, please don't just take this like, oh, yeah, 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 and I talked to Susan, blah, blah, blah. Really take this seriously, okay? Thank you so much for writing. Kick him to the curb. <laughs> Susan's right. You're right, Terry. Susan's right. Um I'm going to be talking to the Today Show pretty soon, so I'm supposed to be off the phone here. Let's see if they're getting back to me. Hang on a minute. Okay, yes, that's okay. Okay, so I'm going to finish up here. Now, oh, Jesus, Carrie says, I've been assaulted by men who started out raging. Very dangerous. You certainly don't need to settle. Okay, we came a long way from talking about the holidays. I'm going to start to wrap this up. I have an interview in 15 minutes. I've got to get my head sorted for whatever they're going to ask me. I wish all of you a very happy season. I know I will not be here next Thursday. You will see my videos coming out on Tuesday, and I might even put an additional one out on Thursday because I'm shooting a batch of them. I have to thank B and Alex and Gwyneth for being my moderators. And I, I thank all of you for coming on board here. Thank you, those of you who wished me happy birthday. Yes, it was last week. I want to remind all of you that there's a lot of good stuff. I am encouraging you to sign up for my newsletter. I do not do anything weird with your address. I don't. Um, I just, I need a portal that's safe and kind of secluded where I can confide in you all things that are going on that I may not want to share here with um, events and personal meetings and things like that, okay? Because as I travel throughout the world, I am going to Dubrovnik, Split, and Sorrento along with Munich. And I wanna be able to gather all of you that wanna meet in a certain place. And I wanna be able to do that in an environment where it's not public, okay? Um, let's see what else. Consultations, you may, want to work with me, I do by the hour and I do 45 minutes right now. Um, you may see some gaps in the time. If you don't see times, don't think I'm not working. I am working. Um, my calendar only goes 14 days in advance. 
So as of today, you would only see two weeks in advance. Okay. So don't think, oh my God, she's not working at all. I don't see her in the next five days because I'll be out a little bit. Okay. Um, and that's it. I think I wish all of you a very happy time. Natalia, thank you. I can't believe I've allowed myself to be in this situation. Things have gotten so bad so quickly. Honey, you didn't know. <laughs> you didn't walk into that saying, oh, gee, hi, he's an abusive guy who's going to get violent and beat his neighbor to a pulp because of road rage. You didn't enter that knowing. Guy came out of his bag. You're safe. That's what matters. Okay. It's not like you created this. He just came out of his bag and you saw it. So remember, these are just experiences we have in life. And I will be in contact. If you want to know what's going on, go to the community page. I know I won't be here next Thursday. I'm not sure if I'll be presentable a week later. I probably can't cover my face with makeup, so I won't be here on the 24th. But I, I'll see. You will find out by going to the community page. I thank all of you for your contributions today. I thank you for being a part of my YouTube family here. Um, you can join me on Instagram. There, I'm Susan E. Winter. My name is actually Susan Winter. There are tons of Susan Winters. So somehow, because they kept getting me confused with a South African writer, Google started calling me Susan E. Winter. So people think my name is Suzanne e. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I think United Airlines thinks my name is Suzanne, but uh, yeah, no, I'm actually Susan Elaine Winter. Um, I thank all of you mods. Everyone have a wonderful time. Please let me know what you'd like to hear about as we move forward. I've got some really cool things. Best worst date. I bet you forgot all about it. I did not. I'm having a special premiere where you get to see what I did last year. I didn't release it for because it was shot in the winter time. So there's a lot of cool stuff that I have in the can coming up that I want to share with all of you. And wish me luck on my technology learning Zoom, not just to answer your calls on Zoom for the consultation, but I want to be interviewing my colleagues and putting them on this channel as well so that you can see some of the people that I like in the industry and we can have some specific conversations where I get to interview my friends and bring you more information from trusted resources. Have a wonderful holiday season, everybody. I will be in communication with you. You might not see my face, but I will be here. Thank you. Thank you. Mwah. Wishing everybody a wonderful holiday season. And I'll see you back with a face that's going to be all whitish colored for a while and no sunspots and uh, little issues here. So thank you everyone and have a wonderful week. Bye-bye now.